Acceleration is that one phase where more than 70% of an athlete's energy gets wasted. And if that energy loss can be reduced in any way, performance improvement is guaranteed. Usain Bolt's early 100-meter splits from the 2008 Olympic Games show that the maximum energy output happens in the first 30 meters. For more than 90% of athletes, the problem is the same. Either they have good acceleration but poor top speed, or great top speed but weak acceleration. You'll find plenty of videos on YouTube talking about this topic, but no one really explains the exact scientific formula to fix it permanently. In today's video, I'll explain foot strike, ground reaction force, and acceleration from a scientific and physics-based perspective and show you how to fix them once and for all. Now the question is, how does 70% of the energy get wasted in acceleration? Let's understand it in two simple ways. First, energy that's applied in the right direction converts into speed. Second, energy that's applied in the wrong direction gets wasted. And this is where most energy loss happens during acceleration. According to Hunter et al. 2004, Journal of Sports Sciences, energy during acceleration is lost due to improper force angle. I've identified five key points where most athletes experience energy leakage, whether it's in the top speed phase or during acceleration. Foot not landing directly under the hip. Excessive knee bend, lifting the body upward too early. Collapsing ankle, inability to apply proper horizontal force. All these energy leaks are actually easy to fix, but athletes often overcomplicate them. And instead of improving, they end up making things worse. Now think about this. If you already know the right angle for force application, yet you still push from the wrong one, why does that happen? That's where the mind-muscle connection comes in. This connection decides which angle your body applies force from. Carl Lewis emphasized this concept in his 10-meter star technique, and the results were clearly visible in his 1984 Olympic start. He identified his weakness in the first 10 meters and fixed it, and that's exactly what separates elite sprinters from the rest. If you want to identify your own weakness and learn how to fix it quickly, watch the video linked in the description or visit the channel page. I keep making videos like this, so make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what topic you'd like next. Now back to our main point, Yang. Your entire sprinting or athletic technique depends on your mind-muscle connection. Muscles don't have a brain. They only respond to the signals sent by your brain. To build a strong mind-muscle connection, the most effective way is repetition. Doing the same thing again and again, especially the part you're weak at. Let's take an example. Suppose there's a 100-meter sprinter with poor acceleration because his foot doesn't land under the hip and his ankle collapses. To fix this, he should perform low-effort, high-repetition drills. According to Schoenfeld 2010, Strength and Conditioning Journal, Science Direct, neural adaptation and motor learning occur through repeated low-intensity movements, which reinforce precise motor unit recruitment. Controlled repetition builds brain-muscle synchronization, allowing you to apply maximum force at the correct angles. In simple terms, like when you put in too much effort, you lose control over your mind. I think by now, you've understood the concept clearly. Now I'm going to give you a few exercises, because just doing repetitions alone to achieve the correct position can be very time-consuming. So we'll train the brain in multiple ways, and to do that, we'll use specific drills and exercises. If I were an athlete, I'd prefer doing the wall drill, because its posture is almost identical to the acceleration phase, which helps you achieve that position much faster. Before we move ahead, listen to this carefully. Usain Bolt and Carl Lewis both practiced posture-focused wall and drive drills to master their early acceleration angle. Bolt's coach, Glenn Mills, always emphasized hip projection and shin angle control. And that's exactly what the wall drill develops. In a BBC Sport 2016 interview, Glenn Mills said, we spend more time teaching the correct drive posture than anything else. Once posture is set, speed takes care of itself. If that didn't fully make sense, rewind and listen again. Because once you understand this, the next concepts will become much clearer. For the acceleration phase, perform multiple variations of the wall drill. However, beginners should do it without resistance, while those who've reached an advanced level can add resistance for extra load. And make sure you're mindful of sets and reps, because quality matters more than quantity. Do no more than three sets of 10 reps. Don't try to add more exercises for this phase. These two things are more than enough. One, repetitions for acceleration with low effort. 
two, wall drill practice. You can also combine both for even better results. Do the wall drill first, then move straight into acceleration practice, and finally record your sprint to observe where mistakes are happening and what's working right. I hope now you've clearly understood the formula to fix foot strike and acceleration phase technique. If you feel this video gave you value, make sure to hit like and subscribe for more content. Now let's understand a bit about force. The same force that shows up in your foot strike and stride frequency. Everyone knows that to increase force, you need weight training. But today, we'll learn how to generate and apply force directly on the track, not in the gym. If you want to feel what real ground force is like, do downhill sprints. You'll notice your body naturally pulling forward and work. And when you apply that same force on flat ground, you'll move with the same explosive speed. First, sled running. This improves your acceleration phase. Limit your repetitions to within 60 meters and avoid doing it on the track, because soil absorbs force while track surfaces don't. Simple rule. When you shift from hard to soft ground, you lose your power output. Second, plyometrics. I recommend two exercises here. One, hopping two, bounding among these. Single leg hopping is the most important. If you want to explore more variations, you can definitely try them, just like shown in CD, coaching drills. And the final one, downhill sprint. According to studies from NCCA and Elite Sprinters, 2010 to 2015, Downhill sprints are used to train horizontal force application and acceleration technique. Think of it this way. After doing the wall drill and acceleration repetitions, your body becomes much more efficient at applying force in the horizontal direction. But when you do a downhill sprint and then try sprinting again on flat ground, your mind feels something's off. That's because while sprinting downhill, you were moving much faster forward. But once you return to level ground, that extra speed seems to disappear. Here's the interesting part, your subconscious mind can't fully tell the difference. The subconscious doesn't think, it just repeats. Through repetition, it turns movement into an automatic pattern. It only focuses on doing, not analyzing. That's the key idea when, when you perform downhill sprints, those fast movement signals get stored in your subconscious, and then your brain naturally tries to recreate that same speed phase every time you sprint. So, these are my psychological and scientific techniques that can help you develop ultra-human level performance. And if you want to know what truly makes you fast, make sure you watch this video. Tell me in the comments what topic I should cover next to make your speed journey even faster. By the way, I'm planning a video on the engine of sprinting, hip extension. If you want that topic too, comment yes or share your own idea below. Thanks for watching.